Hi everyone and welcome to this video series on Palo Alto. Today's series we are going to talk about a specific topic of Palo Alto which is called as user ID. Now this particular series of uh, a user ID is broken down in four topics and we'll be first looking at the concept of what exactly is user ID. Uh, we'll be understanding why do we need a user ID in today's uh, a modern enterprise network and if we are using Poro Alto then as a firewall then what are the different uh, implementation of uh, user ID. So the second would be a lab in which we are going to look at a concept uh, which is agentless uh, configuration of for all those uh, user ID. The third would be the second lab where we'll be looking at the uh, user ID uh, agent, which is uh, an agent of for all to which needs to be installed. So we'll be going ahead and looking at how do we install that and what is the configuration step involved in doing uh, uh, agent based uh, authentication with for all those uh, user ID and then finally we'll be looking at active authentication what exactly is active authentication and how we can span active authentication for our enterprise network okay so let's begin with the concept uh, of what exactly is uh, user ID and why do we need it so let's assume that we have a network which is without a user ID so in case if let's say there is no user ID connected right now for this enterprise network and we have uh, just a for all to appliance a firewall appliance uh, which has been deployed in this uh, uh, enterprise and there is no user ID so assuming if that's the case then in this case if let's say a particular user logs in into the PC so let's say this is the PC and the user has logged in on this PC and he wants to access a specific website, a specific site such as let's say google.com or facebook.com or any of these websites. Then in that case, uh, when the traffic is going to pass through the Palo Alto appliance, at that time, uh, based on the policy uh, which the administrator has configured on the Palo Alto, the uh, user would have access or no access. So let's assume that there is a specific policy where the user has give uh, the administrator has given the access to the user to this specific subnet, which is on my inside plan of uh, uh, this enterprise to access internet. Okay, so there is a policy which is involved uh, where this specific subnet has been given access to the internet. Now, if let's say this particular subnet belongs to a specific uh, uh, um, uh, set of users who should have access to Facebook uh, for their campaign purpose or should have access to some specific websites such as YouTube because they are marketing people and they upload content. So in those case, if uh, another user from another network uh, let's say uh, uh, employee who is just a simple employee who comes in and uh, needs to work on specific application who does not need to have access to those specific websites such as Google or Facebook then in that case if he also uh, spoofs his IP address to this specific network he would have access to the uh, content which is of Google or Facebook. So how do I go ahead and prevent access to a specific user who belongs in specific group, who belongs in specific uh, 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 who belongs in specific uh, 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 part of my active directory. So how can I go ahead and authenticate those users and only those users who have who has permission to access those resources can be given access. So that is where the concept of user ID comes in. So user ID is a feature uh, of Palo Alto which gives us identity-based uh, authentication. Okay, it gives us authenticate. It does authentication of the user, and based on the authentication, 
we would have access to specific uh, 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 resources, okay, which the security administrator has given permission to. So the benefit of using user ID is visibility. So this is a very powerful uh, benefit of using user ID or integrating user ID in your environment. Visibility means that, uh, for example, taking the same case where the user from another subnet comes in and logs in on this PC and he is connect, he's trying to access to Google or he's trying to access to Facebook. In that case, because he needs to authenticate first or his authentication credential would be checked by Poro Alto to verify if this particular user has permission to access google.com or facebook.com or any resource on the network. So uh, it gives us capability to authenticate the user and then based on the authentication and permission of the, whatever is configured, he would have access to specific resources. So visibility, when we say visibility, we would be seeing the username has one of the attribute in our logs. So we would have different logging capability, which is there in the Poro Alto appliance, the monitor, uh, monitoring capability. So all those uh, logs would show us the username, which has gone ahead and connected and uh, authenticated or used that specific policy for accessing to Google or Facebook. So uh from a logging perspective we not only have ip address in our logs but we also have usernames okay so which is a very powerful uh measure to check who has logged in and uh which type of application which type of uh, specific uh, uh url the user is uh uh, trying to access so from a visibility perspective it gives us a very good uh, reporting capability and not by just looking at IP address but also by looking at the user name the second type of uh, uh, benefit the second benefit which we will get with uh, using user ID is policy control uh, policy control means that it allows us to control who should have access to specific application okay so coming to the same point as visibility that when we are going ahead and enabling user id we are going to go ahead and see the user id in each and every logs on for but with uh, policy control we are also going ahead and matching that user in our policies so whether it is a for app id or whether it is for any specific uh, uh, rule which is to access internet all those rules would go ahead and match on uh, or will be also leveraged with uh, usernames okay and groups which that specific user belongs in so from a policy control perspective we will go ahead and authenticate the user before he gets access to specific uh, resource on the internet and again if in case, let's say, uh, we want to go ahead and do any uh, foreign snake after the uh, attack has taken place, we need to go ahead and see from where the attack has was initiated because of integrating the identity in our uh, firewall, we will be able to go ahead and see in our uh, uh, reporting uh, uh, reporting what type of user try to access and what type of resources he tried to access also it gives us a detailed analysis on per user basis if you want to run any specific report for the user uh, saying that what type of resources the user had access to which URL did he visited so those type of reporting capability will only come up if we go ahead and integrate uh, user ID with uh, for all two. and how does uh, the this integration happen in for all two? there are multiple different uh, uh, ways to go ahead and do that we can go ahead and integrate it with our existing directory services so in case if you have active directory uh, as one of the uh, directory service in your network then you can go ahead and use active directory to authenticate the user and then 
verify if that user has permission to access specific resources or not. So integration with uh, directory services such as Active Directory or integration with Novel's uh, eDirectory or uh, Citrix Terminal uh, uh, service, we, we can go ahead and integrate it with multiple different types of directory services. Okay. Um, also, we can go ahead and do active authentication which means that when the user is trying to access at that time, he can go ahead and be presented with a portal, a page where he enters the username and password and then post that entering. He would have access based on the policy, which it matches on. We can also go ahead and integrate uh, 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 for Alto with global protect in case if let's say your users are at some remote location who are going ahead and dialing in with the help of vpn then we can go ahead and use uh, global protect to go ahead and uh, match on specific policy okay so VP, uh, during vpn time uh, you can also go ahead and use global protect as one of the uh, mechanism to go ahead and uh, validate the user also, you can integrate for Alto with some APIs, inbuilt APIs with uh, uh, different type of vendors such as Aruba so that it can go ahead and uh, uh, authenticate that user using that. Also, uh, for Alto can go ahead and uh, use user ID by uh, integrating it with syslog as uh, using syslog mechanism for authentication which means that in case if let's say your network already is doing authentication with the help of some specific uh, proxy servers or doing authentication with the help of uh, uh, ice if cisco ice then in that case you are already authenticating the user so in this case doing double authentication is not going to help so what you can do is you can ask uh, or you can configure your third party appliances such as ice or your wireless controller or your proxy servers to send syslog messages down to your poro alto and your poro alto can be a syslog listener for those uh, syslog messages and based on those syslog messages it can authenticate and uh, it can verify if this user is supposed to have access to them specific policy or specific uh, uh, application or not okay so it's also can be used with the help of syslog in case if you don't want to integrate it with active directory or any of the uh, directory services uh, as i said that during a uh, uh, case where you are using some kind of a terminal server where you have a user who is logging in on one common uh, server and from there he would have access to the resources such as microsoft's uh, terminal server then in that case you can also go ahead and restrict access based on port numbers okay so which port the user is connecting to based on that port number he can go ahead and have access also we can go ahead and use uh, xff which is nothing but x forwarded for uh, a specific http header which uh, uh, is used during proxy case where you are connected to a proxy server so in case if let's say you as a user are connecting to the internet via the proxy so let's assume that this is the user a and user a is connecting to a proxy solution such as a blue code proxy or Cisco's WSA and then proxy is going ahead and initiating the connection to the respective destination so when you are going ahead and doing this at that time the IP address of that particular user is going to change and it would be the IP address of the proxy server okay so in that scenario you what you need to do is you can go ahead and also match on some specific attributes uh, which is xff so when you can go ahead and tell your for alto that if you see the S xff value in the http header to be uh, the original user ip address at that time you can go ahead and 
allow him access or not okay so you can go ahead and integrate your power alto with uh, third party proxy servers also uh, so these are the different types of uh, mechanism which you can use to authenticate the user okay so what are the different components which are required to build this particular solution of user id so there are two basic components one is how do i go ahead and map the groups which the user belongs in so actually the groups are there in the active directory so let's say the user a is part of a group called as admin right so now this specific admin group is what we want to leverage in our Palo Alto policy that if the user belongs in the admin group, then he should have access to that specific resources on the internet. So in this case, what we need to do is we need to somehow inform Palo Alto about that group information. Okay, so that is where we need to go ahead and uh, integrate it with LDAP or our Active Directory, which uses LDAP in the backend, to go ahead and give us that information about the users and the groups which are there in the directory services. So we will see in our second uh, uh, lab topic, how do we go ahead and integrate your Poro Alto with Active Directory so that it can retrieve all the user and group information from that directory services. Uh, the user mapping user mapping is again uh, a mechanism which is used to verify that okay uh, what is the username connected to that IP address like for example if this particular PC who has got an IP address of let's say dot hundred right and the user who has logged in on this PC is user one Now, when the packet is going to come to the Power Alto, and on the Power Alto, you have gone ahead and created a policy that if the user belongs in the group admin, then he should have access to that specific resources on the internet. Let's say Facebook. We have gone ahead and retrieved the group information from Active Directory. So the group information that the user one belongs in the group admin has been retrieved from the uh, uh, active directory by using the group mapping which we saw before now when the packet is coming at that time the packet is coming with an ip address packet does not come with the user information in it which means what somehow for alto has to query or poll to the active directory and it needs to go ahead and know this particular IP address, which is 192.168.10.100, who is connected right now? Who has authenticated using that IP address? So he's going to query to that Active Directory and he's going to retrieve the user to IP mapping and is going to go ahead and match that username, uh, which has come from the uh, response of that query and verify if that particular user has permission or not okay so there are multiple mechanisms uh, to go ahead and retrieve the user to ip mapping so user mapping is nothing but to retrieve the uh, ip to user mapping there are multiple ways to go ahead and do that You can either do it by something called a server monitoring. So in server monitoring, what you are doing is nothing but you are installing a agent. Okay. So there is an agent which is installed on the domain controller of your network. So let's say if this is my domain controller, my DC, then you are installing an agent on this domain controller or any so it is not necessary that it has to be a domain controller but any pc which is a member server of that particular domain so if you have another windows pc and that windows pc is part of your domain then you would be able to install that agent the user id agent on that particular machine and then you are going ahead and telling your power alto 
to query to that particular agent uh, using the TCP uh, port to go ahead and retrieve the user to IP mapping. Okay, and we will again be looking at this uh, when we talk about UIA, which is nothing but user ID agent uh, 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 mechanism. So, but currently at this stage, just to understand what is use server monitoring, it is nothing but there is a specific agent which is getting deployed on the domain controller or any member PC, and you are going ahead and uh, polling to that particular uh, uh, agent. If in case you are not using uh, Active Directory in your particular uh, environment, but you are using Novels, eDirector, then also you can go ahead and integrate it with your uh, user ID. Okay, so if you're using novels e director, same thing, you will be able to retrieve the user information from the uh, server. Okay, uh, in case if you're using uh, uh, Sun Systems uh, directory services, you will also be able to go ahead and do that. Okay, so again, we'll be looking at uh, this in detail when we talk about user ID agent at that time. The next is in case if let's say you want to go ahead and not use server monitoring, you can also go ahead and do port mapping. Port mapping is used when you are using terminal server. At that time, you will be going ahead and using port mapping. You can also use XFF header as we discussed earlier in case if it's a proxy network then you can go ahead and get the actual IP address from this specific field inside the HTTP uh, header, which is coming from the proxy, okay, which is called as XSF header. Next, you can go ahead and do it with the help of syslog. So you, your Power Auto can be a syslog server and the user to IP mapping can be retrieved via syslog servers, which are coming from another appliances such as ICE or your wireless control who are doing who are doing the authentication you can also do a captive portal which is active authentication which is our last topic for this particular series so captive portal uh, is nothing but active authentication where you are forcing the user to go ahead and enter the username and password and it is not seamlessly happening which is what is happening in passive authentication Okay, so and that finally, you can also get the IP to user mapping from Global Protect in case if you are connected via VPN. Okay, so these are the different mechanisms where we can get the IP to user mapping from uh, different uh, uh, appliances which are integrated in your network. <laughs> The next is what are the different solutions to go ahead and build this user ID. So we understand that, okay, user ID is important to give us visibility to match on specific policy, but how do we implement it? And that is where the solution comes in. Implementation is done via two ways. One is called as a passive authentication and one is done with the help of active authentication. Passive authentication is again done via two ways. Uh, one is called as an agentless and one is called as a user ID. So let's understand agentless. What exactly is agentless? An agentless is nothing but as the name says that there is no agent involved in doing the query. Like for example, uh, and this would be our setup for uh, the second, the following uh, course, uh, following module, which is on the, uh, passive authentication with the help of agentless. At that time, we will be seeing that we have this particular PC who is going to be part of this specific network of 192.168.10.0 and it has got an IP address of 100, for example. Then in that case, this is my domain controller who is connected to the IP address of 192.168.10.3. And this would be the default gateway for my inside trusted network. And to connect to the internet, this is the interface which I'm going to use to send the route the traffic to the internet. Okay. And this is my DMC server. So in this case, if let's say 
we use agentless agentless would be there is no agent installed as the packet will come in and we have created a policy to only allow user one who is part of the group admin to have access to the internet to have access to facebook or google on the internet then in that case i need to go ahead and retrieve the user to ip mapping from my domain controller so what he's going to do is he's going to query to the domain controller and he has for also the inbuilt agent which is there is going to query to the domain controller and he is going to retrieve the user to ip mapping okay so there is no agent involved in doing that all the new connections which comes comes in on the poralto poralto is going ahead and sending the query to the domain controller to get the user to ip map in case if you are using a user id agent then there is a specific agent software who is going to go ahead and do the query okay to the domain controller so the agent is actually participating and getting the user to ip mapping from the domain controllers which are there in your network and my poro alto is simply querying to that particular agent and asking that agent what is the user to ip map okay so in this case there is a mediator which is there and the mediator is nothing but that agent software the user id agent which is installed on a particular member pc or a domain controller and active authentication is Uh, where there is no query or there is no uh, uh, by the way i just missed one point that in passive authentication the user is not aware that he is getting authenticated okay it is passively transparently happening uh, whereas in active authentication the user has as soon as the user tries to access some specific resources for alto appliance is going to present him a portal page and the user has to authenticate himself or herself inside that particular uh, portal and then once that credential matches on a specific policy it gets authenticated only then he would have access to the resources so the difference between passive authentication and active authentication is this that from a user perspective the user is not aware that he is getting authenticated in passive authentication whereas in active authentication the user is aware because he has to enter the username and password okay so these this is the concept of user id so let's do a quick recap and let's move to practical on what exactly is user id and how do we deploy the user id using the first lab which is passive authentication with the help of agentless so in this video we have seen what is user id user id is nothing but a component of a uh, uh, component in the poralto which allows us to go ahead and do uh, authentication and build an identity aware network okay so that we can go ahead and only allow users who have been authenticated and it matches that authentication matches on a specific policy benefit of using user id it gives us visibility on who is exactly connecting to what ip address so that from a, a logging perspective we can see those user names inside our logs and we can go ahead and create a policy which is nothing but an identity based policy to check if this particular user should have access or should not have access and in our reporting we can have a detailed reporting on what type of resources the user are accessing so this are the benefits of integrating user id with poralto how do we do that we do that by using two mechanisms two ways we have to do it to set it up one is called as a group mapping which means that the user and uh, which user are part of which group that information we need to retrieve from our directory services either it can be active directory or novels eat director or it could be uh, your sun microsystems uh, director a uh, user mapping user mapping is nothing but the ip to user mapping which means that how do i know for this particular ip address who is the user who is connected so that the retrieving of user to ip mapping can also be done uh, uh by poralto so that it can keep match on the correct policy and to do that we can either do passive authentication or active authentication so this was the introduction of user id in poralto 
in, let's go ahead and see the next series where we will be doing all these act passive authentication and active, active authentication practically. So hope you enjoyed it and thank you for watching.